Recently, I've been asked, what was my worst, worst day on trail? I had to think about that for a while. Uh, I don't generally think of the trail in terms of what's better or what's worse. I generally think of the trail in terms of of uh, accomplishment of uh, of the entire trail of you know in that concept in that regard I do have certain stops that I've made that I enjoyed more than others uh, when I was on the AT for example I enjoyed Gatlinburg probably too much uh, I enjoyed Daleville uh, Daleville was probably the best weekend I had on trail on the AT uh, then then um, uh, on the PCT um, you know that that let's so that that's my worst day uh, when I was on the PCT I I was I went very early in the year or left at the beginning of March which it was just in hindsight and I now I know why I got that date and why I was only one of a few that were out there because we were the only ones crazy enough to to be out there <laughs> um, but it, and it, it immediately got bad it, it was immediately really rough for those of us that that were out there and it wasn't long I mean we weren't even in Paradise Cafe Paradise Valley Cafe before probably a quarter of the ones that were there had already dropped off the trail then when we got up into Laguna and so on and the snowstorm started hitting Idlewild, uh, I was very distraught over the, the, the hike and my decisions. I, I felt I had made some bad decisions and so I thought, okay, I'm just going to push through. And then when we got locked into Idlewild, I was thinking, uh, because I'd gone into town, like I had gone into the, it was it's called the Red Kettle. If you ever get a chance to go to Idlewild, there's this little hole in the wall diner called the red kettle downtown and that's where all the hikers meet that's where you go there on a, for breakfast and there's probably 80 to 100 hikers there on any given day depending on of course when the bubbles are coming through but so we because we were trapped in there for quite a few days uh, it just built up and up and up and then more and more hikers were coming in through the storm and and trying to stay there I mean, I had people sleeping on the floor of, of my room uh, I had like a suite and so people couldn't get accommodations. That's how many people were there So that was pretty bad. So I was very proud of myself after that after talking to so many people about how we're gonna jump up to mile 450 up to to Acton and just continue on and hopefully the bad parts behind us yes in the back of my mind I was still worried about the Sierras getting into the Sierras too early but my idea was to go up to the Sierras come back redo redo that section up to Acton and then by that time hopefully it was July uh, that didn't happen and and I was so preoccupied with that that when I got just before Green Valley um, and so that this would have been around mile in the 500s I would say 520 give or take it was after Acton Acton was mile 450 and I was coming down I was on a descent and it was on the north side of a mountain and just so you know the 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 south side of the mountains at that time of the year the sun would shine on the south side of the mountain but never on the north so the north side is where we would all have difficulty with the snow and with with how the trail conditions were how sloppy they were it was very difficult to assess what was underneath that snow you'd put your foot down and it, it would go down two feet and you don't know if you're going to rub your shin on a rock or a, or a, a, a log that's underneath the snow or maybe your foot gets to the ground and it hits a, the side of a rock and it twists I don't know how many times I rolled my ankle uh, but in Green Valley I was coming down that final hill and so happy because I was having such a tough time um, 
on the north side of these mountains that I, I, I remember being so relieved thinking, oh, great, it's got one of the best resupplies. Uh, there's a uh, free camping at the fire hall. I was thinking to myself, woohoo, yeah, let's go get this. And, uh, and it probably reflected in my videos. And then I had a nice big long lunch at the, at this nice little spot by a stream. And, and then it all just went south so quickly. I couldn't even believe it. I, um, I, uh, fell down. So I was, I was, there was snow on the north side of the mountain and I was, I was stepping, I thought, pretty carefully, pretty gingerly, you know, but it just turns out that it was one of those situations where I put my foot down, it landed on a rock, a, a big rock underneath the snow, like about a foot and a half underneath the snow, I was post holing, and my ankle rolled, but it didn't settle, like so sometimes what happens is your ankle will roll, but you slide, it still slides off the side of that rock and ends up landing on the ground at some point. That didn't happen this time. My my ankle rolled, but it just kept rolling. I was actually on the side of the mountain at that point. And so uh, at the very last second, uh, my ankle was rolled so bad that my toes and the metatarsal were underneath my foot. I was actually, I, I was actually, it was like that was the bottom of my foot. The top of my foot was now the bottom of my foot. And I was putting pressure on it as I was losing my balance going over and so then at the very last second split last second I I knew that my foot wasn't going to hold out there's no way I could put any more weight on that side to brace myself against going down so I knew I was going down I immediately scanned for anything that was there that could hurt me number one because I knew I was going down and then when I did start going down I t of course I tucked and rolled because I didn't want to, again, expose parts of my body that were more, uh, you know, susceptible, right? And, and you know, you, you pick up speed as you go down and you're like, each time that you, you spin around and you're getting to see the whole thing, what's in front of you, it's like, oh, there's a little tree. If, if, I, could just, if I could just grab that tree, you know, and that's what I did. I actually was was rolling behind it and I and I just happened to turn around coming to that tree as I was upright as I was in, at that moment I, I didn't have my back to it I didn't you know I was actually approaching that tree straight on straight forward while I was rolling and I just reached out and I just grabbed that tree uh, that tr tree branch well my my force my what do you call it my um, what's the word momentum took me, spun me around this tree because I caught the side of the branch. I didn't hit the trunk of the tree, obviously. I caught the side of the branch and it swung me around the tree and slammed me into a rock on the other side of the tree and wedged me be between the tree and, and the rock. Well, I was absolutely stunned. I, I mean, I was absolutely in a, in a kind of a blackout kind of a state at that point. I was in excruciating pain. I was howling for like at least a couple minutes, just, you know, I'm a real, I'm a big suck when it comes to, to pain. I don't, I don't feel a lot of pain, but when I do, yeah, you know, <laughs> anyways, so I'm, I'm there for like, oh, I don't even know. It had to be 15, 20 minutes. And then I calmed down and I'm okay. How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get back up? Cause I was down about, oh, I don't know, 60 feet maybe. Yeah, I would say 60 feet from the trail. I was down below. And it wasn't for, say, maybe another half hour, uh, this guy comes by. Well, there was two guys, actually. One came first. He was ahead. And, of course, this is your mind Your mind goes in so many directions. Like He's like, well, send the pack up. I'll, I'll throw a rope down and you send the pack up. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. I don't know you, like, you know, and I didn't, I didn't, and I, I don't know, maybe I was being too overly paranoid or something, I'm not sure, but he goes, okay, fine, so then he sends down a rope, and, and I put it on me, and of course, I knew my knots, there you go, all right, these knots are, they're, they are valuable, 
anyways, I knew my knot, so I, I, I put the knot around me, and um, they started, his buddy had showed up by that time, and they started pulling me up. And I ended up having to lay on my back and let the pack go up the snow, like be, it was my toboggan, it was my sled going up. It allowed me to slide easier without having for me to put weight on my foot and push, try to push myself up as they were pulling me. But they finally got me up to the trail and one of them kept going and the other one walked me down two miles down a, an old logging road uh, that got me off that, that mountain and into Green Valley where I spent four days, where I just literally just for four days I hung around, or maybe it was three. It might have been three. But, you know, and so by this time, after three days, you know, in Green Valley, I thought, okay, it, it feels a little better. I wasn't putting any weight on it. And, and I didn't mind staying there because I had a nice store that I could go to to eat if I needed to. You know, I had free camping at the fire hall. A, and and I spoke to somebody at the fire hall. They had come by, and I had, I had spoken to one of them. There was a paramedic there that had come by, and and they said, you know, without X-rays, we can't really be sure uh, what what's going on with it. But if your foot does feel better, then likely it's not a break because a break would would la it would persist, right? And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go. I'm I'm going to go hiking, and so off I went. And, and I made it, I just kept going and I just kept pushing through it. And I'm telling you, it was killing me. By the time I got to like down past Hiker Town and, and, um, and um, Cotton, was it Cottonwood? I think it was called Cottonwood, uh, White River, all that stuff. I, um, I noticed, but you know, in Tehachapi, I had stopped at, at Mike's place and, and um, stayed there for a couple days and decided to, to go on towards Walker Pass. And and I got maybe, I don't know, like two, maybe three days in. And I had met Caroline on trail. She was she owned a property right there. You know, the funny sign with the shooting, you know, trespassers will be shot, then prosecuted. Remember I said that joke, like, don't worry about prosecuting me if I'm already dead. If you shot me dead, then prosecution is the least of your concern. Anyway, uh, so I, I ran into her and and she drove me back down uh, 20 miles um, down a horrible road. And then Mike came and got me from the highway. Thank you so much, all of you all trail angels. Uh, and got me back into Tehachapi, and it was it was actually Mike when we were talking because we were just we were alone and and we had gone out for dinner and and he had said it to me. He goes, you know, are you sure that your foot's not broken? And then it just hit me. It just hit me like a brick. It was like, wow, no, I, I'm not I'm not sure at all. In fact, it could be. Uh, I started thinking and processing this, and I thought, well, I can't, I can't stay here. I can't stay in America. My visa is only six months, and I want to make sure I make the best use of of my time here. So that's that's when I flew back to Canada for seven weeks, uh, and came back and went at it again. Uh, but but that day, that day, that moment. Yeah, yeah, rolling down that hill, my life flashed before my eyes. I was just like, I wasn't, it's funny, you know, it seemed like a long time. It probably, the whole thing probably only lasted, I don't know, I'm guessing 10 seconds maybe. But in that 10 seconds, it's funny how much your brain can process in that 10 seconds. I My whole life flashed before my eyes. You know, I, um, and, and all I could think about was, was from before and how I was never going to get to say things I want to say, do things I wanted to do. You know, it's funny. You just go doom and gloom all of a sudden, right? Oh man, I tell you. So that was my experience. That, that was the worst day I've had on the PCT. Hopefully that will continue to be the worst day I've had on the PCT because if it is, that means that I haven't had any more bad days on the PCT. And yeah, I and I mean we all have stories, but that's mine. That was that was my worst day on trail in in 2023. I think the best day was probably trail days, but 
that's debatable too. There were other really good days. So anyways, I hope you had some fun with that and uh, let's go get it.